starting YouTube can be really difficult over the past five years. It's something I always thought about doing, but for one reason or another, I didn't. Obviously, I can come up with loads of different excuses, but in reality, I was just really fucking afraid. I was afraid of other people's opinions, but I didn't have the right equipment, that the market was too saturated and value would take me forever to grow. So today, I wanna to talk to you about each one of those fears I faced, and I know many of you are facing exactly the same thing. So I want to dissect them and kind of bring light to what they actually are. You're afraid of others their opinions that, that they think, that you think that the videos are actually good, but in reality, they're not. We have to understand this, no one cares about you as much as you care about yourself. So let's say you're walking down the street and you see somebody trip over, how quickly will you go back to own world, your own little problems, same with anything else? It is from somebody who was afraid to upload on YouTube for over five years, it might even pushing it to six, if not more. 99.9% .9 of the fear will literally vanish as soon as you press upload. With zero subscribers, no one's actually gonna watch your videos, no one's really gonna care, unless you actually show it to them, especially right at the very start. So it's like, I have no idea why I was this fucking afraid and nervous about publishing a video online. Do I think somebody's gonna jump on a laptop and slap me and laugh at me how bad the videos are? No, nothing actually happened. Now all this mental energy will be freed up to do more productive things. So now we're not really consciously thinking about like, oh, okay, what's gonna happen if I upload? Now we're gonna be like, okay, how can I make this video better? And the cool thing is after uploading enough YouTube videos, it literally part, it starts to become part of your identity. It's just making these videos something you just do. It's like, oh, I'm just somebody who goes to the gym. So it's more less subconscious. Like, okay, like why would I not go to gym? The same with making these videos. So it just becomes part of your daily and weekly routines. So it's just 10 times easier to actually do those things. Okay, imagine how much progress you're gonna make this year on your start today. And you don't wanna be in this kind of process of like, oh, only if I did this a year ago, imagine my progress of what I made. Don't do this to yourself. Like this, this literally slows you, fucking kills you. So do that, whatever it's this or something else, starting a business or whatever else. Just start now and slowly see how things progress. And another mental mental model I really like, if you're not embarrassed by yourself a year ago, you haven't grown enough. This is quite a cool thing to think about because reality is like, if you're not growing you're not learning and if you're not really embarrassed by yourself of who you were like last year then what the fuck are you really doing because otherwise just living in a little bubble just thinking and caring so much about yourself and how you perceive by others and so this this is also quite a cool mental model which i quite quite enjoyed i need good equipment to start the, the thing is like even me talking about it now just sounds so stupid no you really fucking don't have your phone camera that's it you really don't need much i had an iphone 7 plus and then dad did a quite a decent job KSI has got crazy amount of subscribers. He uses Canon kind of like G7X up to this point. And so if KSI can succeed with that, I'm sure you can too with your little iPhone camera. There's a lot more to it than the equipment itself. A lot of the videos, a lot of the initial videos I did, probably the first like 15, 20 videos when she filmed like iPhone 7 Plus, was the quality good? No, but was I putting the reps in? Yeah. And this will even compound further in a couple of years down the line. And I'd be like, oh, I'm so grateful I actually did start this on my iPhone 7 Plus. A while back, so about four years ago, I decided to buy a camera and I was like, you know what, when I get a camera, I'll finally be able to make YouTube videos because I have good equipment, I'm gonna just put it down and just talk to a camera. In reality, did this happen? No, so I got the camera. I'm like incredibly excited. I kind of like waited till like my parents are out of the house so I can go to the guest bedroom, could put the camera down on some shelves and then I sat down, started talking to a camera. What do you think happened? Firstly, I was incredibly shit at it. So I was talking about it, I was really nervous, really tense. And um, yeah, I spoke to the camera for maybe 20 minutes. And I was like, oh fuck, no. And I ended up deleting the video and never doing it again. How crazy is that? And yeah, just looking back at it, it's just, it's just quite funny. I wish I actually had that recording somewhere, but unfortunately I didn't, I know. Moral of the story, the, uh, the bottleneck of you making YouTube videos is not the equipment, it's you sitting down with anything. It could be a fucking potato, it'd be like your Nokia and pressing record. So you wanna ask yourself, what's the minimal amount you actually need? Just to make the whole process less frictionless. You're having loads of different equipment, loads of different setups, like it's very overwhelming. So especially at the start, like there's just so many new things, new stimuli. So you wanna kind of reduce that, just make it frictionless. So you can literally just get a camera, put it up against a shelf, put it up against some books and just press record. You can talk about absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be good. Even with the editing software, like you can use a e free editing software on your phone, or you can take even skip that step, just not use the editing software at all. Just record the journey, record where you started over time, get better. So the two things you really wanna think about, like as I was saying, it's like one of them being Excel microphone, 
people can sit through a bad video, but like if the audio is really bad, like yeah, it's just, just a complete no-go. So you wanna have some sort of decent audio. And then with the lighting, like it doesn't really matter what camera you have, if you have good lighting, the whole setup is gonna be 10 times better. Point number three, there's so much to learn, I don't know where to start. And this is coming back to the previous point. It's very easy to kind of look at other different YouTubers and have a look at the setup, get completely overwhelmed but you're forgetting that they've been doing it for four or five, probably even more years. You're kind of focusing on that step 500, but you focus on step one first. So you wanna focus on where you are right now on the step one and then go to step two. Maybe right at the very start, you just have your camera and then maybe introduce your external microphone and then maybe introduce different editing kind of styles. But basically just experiment with it and slowly over time, you see you'll get better at doing this. Again, reframe the perspective that this is bad, like, oh, this is difficult, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Reframe it to like, oh my God, there's so many actual skills I'm learning and developing as a result of doing this. And the, the thing is like, the feeling you feel like, oh, just things are really hard, you feel, this is actually good, this is known when you're growing. So let's have a look at it in terms of example at with working out. So when you're doing, let's have bicep curls and sort of exercise at the gym, the reps when it's really easy and light, when you put in literally no effort, no resistance, it's very, you're not making, you're not making any progress, you're not building muscle. It's only when you can physically feel like so much tension and stress when you are lifting, and this is when you know we are actually building muscle. So we're able to feel and discomfort for what it actually is. This is a good thing. This is you learning new things and you building a psychological muscle. And the thing is like, you, you only develop these skills through doing, not by intellectually trying to understand and for watching different YouTube videos. And you actually have to do, for example, like I thought about doing this for four, five, even six years. Like I was looking at different videos of how can I start, what can I do, like what software is I need, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't actually learn much until I actually kind of got in the trenches and started to film and start to actually upload different videos. And there's so many little things to actually pick up and get better at through doing instead of trying to intellectually understand it. This highlights the point of starting and then learning instead of learning and starting. It's trying to focus on step one and then step two instead of focusing step two to 500. As a little challenge, go to your favorite content creator, go to their videos, and then assort the videos from oldest to newest, and have a look at the first couple of videos. If they haven't deleted them, you'll realize how shit they were as well. It's the whole, it's the whole point is like they were on step one as well. And then over time, they progressively overloaded the stuff they're doing and they got really good at what they're doing. Okay, let's shift perspective and realize that it's actually good where it takes forever to grow. So firstly, at the start, don't want to watch the videos, which is great because a lot of the times the videos, your starting videos are really shit anyways. There's this barrier to entry. If it was easy, everyone else would be doing it. So of course it takes like years of you just doing this one skill and slowly getting better over time, slowly building up the repetitions. And if like it was really incredibly easy and it wouldn't take forever to grow, everyone else would be doing it. So it wouldn't actually be that special. I think it's the main trick, the main hack here, well, not really much of a hack, um, is like through listening to different YouTubers talking about this, through going to different courses and events, like 99.9% .9 of success here is you staying consistent and slowly over time improving, that you make improving each video by 1%. And then over time, you'll get better, you'll figure out, you'll start looking at different niches, you'll figure out your unfair advantage, you figure out all these different things, but everything's gonna do just staying consistent and doing it over time. Okay, I'm around like six months into this journey. So I wanna come back in like half, like um, a year or two time and see how far I've progressed. Like, well, my opinions would have changed, but in reality, I don't think so. This is like the fundamental stuff of it. And yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Now that you know all this, if starting YouTube is something you really want to do, so just try it. Just put your phone against some bookshelves or whatever, and just press record. You don't have to upload the video. You can you can even upload it and just unlist it. There's a bunch of skills you're gonna know when it comes to just uploading, editing, etc. If you want to know a bit more, maybe some let some things I learned as a result of making 20 YouTube videos, I'll link a video right here. Okay guys, thank you. Bye.